Um, so, if I understand, can animals pick up um, illnesses, beliefs like cancer and stuff? It's a really, really, it's a really interesting question. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, a belief, let's say, or a pattern can be picked up in many different ways. Not just our, you know, the humans tend to speak in verbal beliefs. Like, we, you know, if we say cancer, we've all got the image and the program to do with cancer. But there is another way to take on a program, which I normally call beliefs. And that, that's visually, yes, that is visually. And also I'd say that even uh, on a certain level, now here's the thing, when, when there is love t uh, between, not, let's not even say humans, between two things, out of love, like, I mean, a great example is children. Even if children have uh, parents who are not always nice, you know, there is an immense love for the parents and there is a taking on innocently of everything, good and bad. So it's like the, the innocence of the child, which is quite empty of programming, takes on all the good traits and beliefs, shall we say, and patterns of the parent. But also out of that innocence and love will also imbibe everything, because if there's love there and there's innocence, of the bad traits and that, that sort of happens out of love as well you know because there's great love so so it's like the innocent thing, love that's there takes on the good and the bad aspects as a program does that make sense yeah yeah so so I never really thought about animals but my intuition is like when there's love you know pet, a lot of pets I would say are incarnated as a, their spirits are incarnated to to give unconditional love with humans. They incarnate, you know, the cat purrs to show its love when the owner is stressed. The dog waves, it, waves its tail when you're feeling a bit down. And I hear so many people talking about, you know, like you've got, I have, a, I have a someone uh, who used to come to the group say, like, uh, oh yeah, you know, I'd get knee pain and my cat would just sit on my knee and start purring. You know, so they sort of sense, um, that, oh, your chakra is out of alignment, so we'll just go and sit on your neck or something. You know? yeah. so, they're going to, so they just, so I, I say they're, you know, the, these pets are often incarnated with a kind of a, a thing of unconditional love, to show unconditional love, but also have some kind of, um, I'm going to say it sounds sound funny, karmically contractual agreement with the owner and the pet on a soul, soul level for teaching each other lessons. So I'd say, you know, um, yeah, so I think pets can get cancer and you love them and they can bring up a lot of stuff and there is a divine reason for that, for a spiritual lesson. And the cat is, you know, the cat might be serving in its own way, and the owner is serving and, and uh, if you do things like the Course in Miracles and I share in the group, then you are also able to clear stuff on behalf of others. So if you've got a, you know, like, I'm just making it up here, like if you had a cat and you're doing a course in miracles and cancelling beliefs uh, and suddenly the cat gets cancer, you know, I, if that was my cat and I loved my cat and my cat loved me, I'd be saying things like, God did not create cancer in Rufus and so it's not real. But, you know, if I, I would get the diagnosis, so I'd take it to the cat. Okay, what, what is the, what's the diagnosis? Okay, it's... Uh, third stage cancer, met metastasis cancer. Okay, well, God did not create third stage cancer in Rufus, and so he's not real. And I'd see that vanish in light. And I'd keep doing that. And I'd let go of the outcome of, you know, whatever it is, and try and clear it on behalf. Because, you know, like, there's a oneness between all humans, there's a oneness between all animals, there's a oneness in consciousness of all life, uh, even though humans tend to speak in languaging sort of say beliefs but I think intuitively uh, all kinds of animals are, have contracts with their owners and all kinds of illnesses can manifest in the animals as well yep I was uh, whilst you were talking I just uh, reminded of something that Hawkins said like when you your love and loyalty yeah. by your from your parents make you pattern yourself after them, yes. In, mm. Even in disease, mm. yes. You reckon that loyalty mm. between a human and a dog, for example, that's right. Might mm. 
do that too? Yes, yes, that's, what I, that's what I was trying to say just now. Out, out of love for various reasons. Also, I mean, on another level, another tangent in some aspects would be like, uh, you know, if, if a pet who loves an owner sees that the owner is in distress uh, on a constant level, has, has anger tantrums and is full of anger, they may also start to pick up on that vibration as well. There's another scenario. And so they may also get traumatized and stressed on a daily basis. And so they may start to pick up things um, which reflect that level of trauma and stress. So they may start to get illnesses. I think as well, you know, we talk about the collective consciousness. And I suppose the collective consciousness, I didn't really think about it before. You know, especially if animals are living with humans all the time, they may be out in the wild. Let's say wildcats may not, you know, uh, like with humans, you know, like when there's a new illness, when there's new, you know, like, uh, I don't know, there could be something like there's new sort of parrot flu that started in the world and everyone's got, you know, adverts on parrot flu, you turn green and you start talking like a parrot. So then suddenly everyone gets parrot flu, you know, kind of, but I think they can, they may well be able to take on for various karmic reasons certain illnesses which may, may be in the wild are not so prevalent for like tigers may not get the, the level of cancer that that can you know I think as we all know like obesity in animals in for humans is not the same as obesity for animals in the jungle you know so there can be things going on but it's a great great interesting those are my things on it and I think there is a karmic contract if you've got an animal they are so Hawkins says, um, in the Rig Vita, it turns out with muscle testing true. When an animal sacrifices its life for a higher purpose, it then gains the karmic merit to go to that level. Does that make sense? So if I, you know, like, if I surrender my life and my will to God, which is the infinite, eternal, timeless, then as my ego dissipates, because I serve the eternal, the infinite, the timeless, then I now get the privilege, after I've surrendered, to be that, yeah? So, I'm not saying it in a direct way, but when an animal, because you take my words out of context, when an animal has a life of service to, a, to an owner, it is, a, it is a thing of service. The cat has been incarnated to serve this human owner with love and affection. So, what is the karmic, what is the karmic merit? for an animal that has chosen a life of service in some way. I'd say it ha has great karmic merit for the animal in the next lifetime, that it chose, chose that, that lifetime. Mm -hmm.